Welcome everybody to another edition of ATG's Tech Talk series. Today we're going to be inside Civil 3D solving a problem that a lot of people have run into where they want to create cut and fill labels that are color coded and only showing when a particular condition occurs. So basically what I want is I want a red label anytime I'm in a cut condition and that's represented by either red or orange in my particular surface analysis that I have now. Or when I'm in fill, I want it to be green, represented by my cyan and green colors for kind of like a lighter fill condition versus a deeper fill condition or lighter cut and heavy cut. Uh, so we're pretty fill heavy on this site. Let's find a way to label this so that we can create an exhibit or do some other sorts of calculations uh, just based on that uh, label spacing. So a couple things here, I'm gonna turn off my surface to kind of clean things up a little bit. And then I need to create a uh, set of labels for that. So with my surface selected, I'm gonna come into my contextual and I'm gonna go to add my surface labels and I want spot on grid. I'll uh, choose a basic X for my marker style. And then I've already gotten started. All my cut stuff is done. So let's go ahead and add these in and we'll kind of watch this evolve over the rest of the video. My base point, I'll choose bottom left no rotation, and I'll do 15 foot X and Y spacing coming out here to the northeast part of my site. Confirm my grid location. And now when I come down and check out my labels, uh, again, this kind of upper left area where I knew I was in that orange color, I can now see this and things are what I want. When I go and look at an area that I know was fill, however, I can't really see much. So now let's go ahead and explore what's actually happening with this label and how we're gonna get these uh, green and reds to show up the way that we want. So what we're really doing is we're taking advantage of a little feature here. When we create a label component, we actually have an opportunity to base our text height off of what we call a civil 3D expression for our labels. Basically, this allows us to do some extra math to get to values that the software might not give us right away. So any label category, so in this case, I'm in my settings tab, surface, label styles, my spot elevation label category has its own set of expressions. Let's take a look at the cut height that I've built. So this one, I'm saying if my surface elevation is less than zero, then I have a true condition and a false condition. In my true condition, I want my label text height, in this case, I'm going 0.08 in paper, I'm dividing that by 12 to get from feet to inches. Um, I want that 0.08 text height. If I'm not less than zero, or rather if I'm in a fill condition, I want my text height to be very small. That's a lot of zeros after that decimal point, followed by a one. So that's my cut condition. If I'm in a fill condition, I want the reverse to happen. So let's go ahead and build that expression. Right click on the expressions to say new. I'll call this my fill text height. And I really want to just close that logic loop. So if I have an if statement for an elevation less than zero, now I need to build, build an if statement for all conditions above zero for that elevation. So this little F plus is going to give me my logic. The little calculator plus is going to give me the various uh, things that Civil 3D will give me out of the box or for that particular uh, object type, as well as any other expressions that I've already created. So I'll want my surface elevation. And if my surface elevation is greater than zero, again, that true condition is just my text height, 008, divided by 12. And then my false condition is that really small number. So I'll say 0 0.1234567 8. Put that one in the ninth place, very small number. And then I'll go ahead and I'll say okay. Don't forget to close your parentheses. Now that I have that expression, let's go back into our label style and let's edit it to give ourselves that fill component. So again, we're here in the layout tab and I need multiple components to take advantage of those multiple text height expressions. To create a new component, I'll simply come over to my component add, choose a text. I'm gonna name this component fill. I'm still gonna attach it to the feature, um, but in this case, I just want uh, to kind of mirror that with a middle left, middle left anchor, sorry, middle right anchor, 
and a middle left attachment. Should drop that right in the same spot over. For my contents, again, I'm just going to be choosing my uh, surface elevation. Any sort of rounding or elevation values for that is perfectly fine. I'll say OK. And then the last thing I need to do is I need to assign my fill text height expression to my text height. And I'm also going to color this component. I'm hard coding it as green in here. Um, depending on how you want those to plot, depending on how you want those to look, we're, we're defining that in the component for our text for its color. Once I press OK, and then do, oh, didn't even have to regen in my drawing. Now I'm getting those multiple colors uh, showing up here in my drawing, and all of my label conditions have been met. Let's turn our volume surface back on to confirm that this is uh, giving us what we want where we want it to be. My elevations surface style. Also going to put that uh, beneath everything just so that I can get a good look. And grab a little object window here. Minus 0.04 in the cut areas. Positive 0.25 in the fill. Turn off my, leave my surface display again. And so let's go ahead and see where did that other text go? Because again, in my cut or fill condition, if I'm not satisfying it, I gave it that really small text type. Well, let's zoom in. I don't know if you can see it yet, but there's a little speck of green here inside my crosshair. And I'm just going to keep on scrolling till I can find it. And boom, there's that minus 0.04 because it's the wrong sign. So we can't make the other condition go away, but we can make it so small that it's not even going to print, and hopefully so small that it's not even going to show up as like a little uh, fleck on our plotter. Again, whatever size you want to set up for those texts, just make sure that it is in your expression. Don't forget to divide by 12 if you're working in imperial units and trying to get um, your paper height inches. And lastly, if you don't like the markers on these, that is something you can change through your Civil 3D Properties palette or something you can assign proactively when you're building those elevation spot on grid in the first place under your marker style. So with that, thanks for tuning in to today's Tech Talk. Have a wonderful rest of your day.